Hello everyone, Gauri here. I hope you all are doing good. In today's session, we will be exploring the central dogma of molecular biology, which is a very fundamental topic for the students preparing for different competitive exams like CSR NET, GATE, NET GRF and so on. Let us begin with the eukaryotic DNA. The nuclei of eukaryotic cells contain double-stranded DNA that is arranged into a three-dimensional helix. Base pairs are used to describe the length of a DNA molecule. As you all know, each nucleotide is composed of a sugar molecule containing 5 carbon atoms, a phosphate group and a molecule containing nitrogen that is known as a nitrogenous base. In cells, DNA is the nucleic acid that functions as the original blueprint for the synthesis of proteins. It contains the sugar deoxyribose, phosphates and adenine, guanine, cytosine and thymine. The picture on the right side shows a eukaryotic cell's nucleoprotein which coils and supercoils, generating densely bound masses at specific points throughout its reproduction. These can be easily observed under a microscope when stained, and they are referred to as chromosomes or colored bodies in their supercoil state. Prokaryotic cells, on the other hand, do not contain histone proteins in their nucleic acids. Instead, they have proteins known as HU proteins. The enormous nucleoprotein molecule also has ends that overlap and interact with one another to form a loop. The plasmid, a second little loop of DNA, includes genes that are not necessary for a cell to function on a daily basis. As scientists began to understand the chemical makeup of the nucleic acids, an attempt was made to understand how DNA and RNA relate to inheritance, cell structure and cell activities. The concept that resulted is known as the central dogma, main belief or the source of all information. DNA replication occurs in cells in preparation for the cell division processes of mitosis and meiosis. Without replication, daughter cells would not receive the library of information required to sustain life. The transcription process results in the formation of a strand of RNA that is a copy of a segment of the DNA on which it is formed. Genes are regions of DNA that are transcribed to give RNA. The gene has the promoter region plus transcriptional start and stop points that flank the actual message. The RNA has three regions, the 5' UTR that is untranslated region. It contains information important for making the protein. The ORF open reading frame has the actual coding region translated into amino acids during translation and the 3' UTR contains other important regulatory elements. After transcription, the RNA has a 5' UTR and 3' UTR which are not translated. Only the ORF is translated into protein. That is it for today. I hope you enjoyed watching the video. Thank you.